My name is Harrison Thomas Duran, and I'm a paleontologist based in North Dakota. The first step towards finding a fossil is prospecting the general geologic rock formation in which the fossils are known to be located. I primarily work in the Hill Creek Formation. That spans across North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, and Montana. You're looking for signs of fragments that are spilling out of the hillside. Depending on the number of fragments that are spilling out at a certain spot, that could give you an indication that there's more bone buried beneath the surface. Now, depending on how deep the bone layer is, we have to remove all of the overburden. So that's any sediment that is on top of the layer. In order to remove the heavy overburden and sediment around a fossil, we either use an excavator crane or we just go by hand and use shovels and pickaxes. For more detailed work, we use a variety of clay sculpting tools as well as dental picks to really work on the detailed surface of the bone. And once the fossil is uncovered, we use a variety of different adhesives to secure the bone. Some are thick and they're used to hold large pieces together, or we have more thinner adhesives which soak into the bone and secure it. And once the specimen is secured with adhesives, we wrap it around in foil and then get burlap strips, dip them in plaster, and apply them to the bone. The plaster jacket hardens and it creates this hardened transport case of which we can pick up the fossil and carry it out of the site. The reason that we have foil on top is because the foil separates the plaster from the bone. This makes it easier when I'm removing the plaster jacket in the prep lab and I'm wanting to expose the bone. Back in the lab, I prepare the specimens. This involves using a variety of strong structural adhesives and sculpting epoxies. The main tool I use is a microabrasion blaster. And this uses a sodium bicarbonate medium that blasts through the nozzle and onto the bone and erodes away the sediment. The other tool I use is an air scribe. You could think of it as a handheld jackhammer which oscillates back and forth and it's powered by the air compressor and it knocks away hardened sediment. And once the specimen is cleaned, that's when I utilize the adhesives to really structurally hold it together. All the adhesives have different properties, so the thin ones I use to soak into the bone and secure it internally. And other times when I want to have large pieces together, I use either gels or thick adhesives to really hold these large pieces that weigh a lot. And I really need them to hold together when I mount a specimen for display. Other times I have large gaps between fossils, so I use the sculpting epoxy which is a two-part solution. It sort of looks like a putty and you work it with your hands and mix it together. There are a few things that could happen with these specimens. We can sell them at auction or have a direct private sale, or we lease them to museums or science centers. In many ways, I'm the dinosaur kid that just didn't grow up. When you uncover the fossilized remains of a dinosaur out in the field, and you are not only the first person, but the first living thing to see this in tens of millions of years, it is an indescribable feeling of discovery and amazement.